Well, with government uh, funding set to expire at midnight Saturday, Republican leaders in the House worked through the weekend to find a way forward through the current GOP impasse. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy plans to move forward with four of the 12 appropriations bills in the House this week, which he hopes will move conservative members to support a short-term funding mechanism that will allow the House to remove the remaining appropriation bills through the floor and over to the Senate. Joining me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Robert Adderhold. He serves on the House Appropriations Committee. He represents the 4th Congressional District of Alabama. Congressman Adderholt, welcome back to Washington Watch. Good to see you. Well, Tony, always good to be with you. Thanks for having me on. Well, I know you've been involved in uh, some of the negotiations and conversations because you and I spoke uh, over the weekend and, and I've, yeah. I've spoken to the House uh, Speaker. What's the latest on the budget negotiations? Have Republicans found a way forward? Well, as of right now, the Speaker, uh, my understanding is that uh, he wants to bring up four bills this week. Uh, and that would be the defense of a homeland security bill, appropriation bill, along with a foreign operations and then agricultural appropriation bill. Uh, the last uh, communication I had was that all of those bills would be under one rule. It would be, move forward, but each individual bill would be debated separately. And uh, that was in one response because a lot of members, and, and rightly so, a lot of members have been concerned about the the fact that we've not br been bringing individual appropriations to the bills to the floor in the last several years. And no one wants to see them lumped them together. And so this is a way to force, uh, to call uh, the hand of the leadership and say, we need to move forward on these bills individually, as opposed to just all of them in block. And so I think that's the goal of all of us. I think the question is, is uh, we can't probably time will not allow by Saturday to get all uh, we got. Well, I say all 12, but we passed one, but all uh, uh, the remaining 11 passed. But um, but certainly I think it will go a long way in showing to the rest of the conference the speaker's commitment uh, to bringing these bills up individually. And Robert, that was a, a key part of the negotiation back in January. And it, it quite frankly, you know, as an appropriator, you, I think, understand the, and have share the yeah. frustration. All these things, after you do all that work in committee, they're just lumped together and there's no debate. They're just one vote and they're pushed forward. All right. No, I, it's been a, uh, it's been very difficult to vote for those omnibus appropriation bills because a lot of things are lumped in them. And so I welcome the opportunity to pass these individually. What I what would probably be in the best interest, I think, of everyone is for these bills to be, we proceed this week and pass all four of those individually. And then if by Saturday, which we'll get as many as we can pass, can pass uh, off the floor, then pass a short-term CR. And I know a lot of my colleagues don't want to do a CR, but that would avoid a shutdown with the commitment that we will maybe even be back next week, which is supposed to be a recess week for members. But I think most I think most every member will be willing to, to cut to stay in town and work on those appropriation bills to uh, plow through the, the remaining 11. So, Congressman, my, my, my take on this is those four bills put forward, as you said, there will be one rule, but they'll be they'll be debated individually, that this is kind yes. of a good faith effort to try to build support for that continuing resolution if it's needed? I think that's the speaker's intention. Now, again, I, I think a lot of us, you know, obviously would like to have seen uh, all of these bills already on the floor. but. Uh, because of various, uh, you know, of course, there's always the August recess, which occurs, and uh, we're not in session during the month of August, and so that prohibits a lot of work from being done during the month of August. But, um, and then uh, there was obviously a couple of Jewish holidays during September that have uh, caused us, a including today, being uh, Yom Kippur. So um, that's why we're not voting today. And we're not going to be voting until tomorrow. So obviously it would have been best to probably have uh, pared down the recess. Uh, but of course, that's the speaker's uh, decision how to do that and the majority leader. And, um, you know, we we abide by what uh, the schedule we're given.
Right. So, uh, Congressman Adderholt, how much time will be allocated to debating each one of these appropriations bills? And I know the rules got to be voted on first, but I'm assuming that uh, amendments will be allowed? That's my understanding. And as I was on a conference call with the speaker and uh, the majority leader on Saturday, and uh, I believe the number that was put out there, that there was about 400 amendments uh, to these four bills. I mean, that could take a so, lot of legislative time on the floor to debate that. Absolutely. No, there's no question that will take a lot of time. But like I said, I think members are very committed to getting in there and and doing what it takes to get those individual appropriation bills passed. And obviously, uh, you know, I understand from a lot of my colleagues that are very frustrated with the process uh, because obviously when you're spending more money than you're taking in, you know, bad things are going to happen. And so, therefore, we have got to get a handle on this. And I think some of the members are trying to really send the message uh, to the Senate, you get your work done, we got to get our work done, or, or you know, this thing is just going to going to explode at some point, and we better pay attention to it now as opposed to on down the road. Congressman Adderholt, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but back in January when we went through 15 rounds of voting on a speaker, I mean, there was a lot of hand-wringing and consternation. And, and, and I said, you know, I, I think this is a good process. A lot of stuff was being aired. Now, I know it's been right. difficult. I, 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 again, I, I spoke to the speaker over the weekend. I know he's having a difficult time. Um, I talked to members of the Freedom Caucus on a regular basis. Uh, they're a little frustrated. I, everybody's kind of frustrated. But I mean, we have a more conservative Republican conference than we've ever had before. And we're addressing some of these issues. And I think this process speaks to that, too. Yes, it's painful. Yes, it's uncertain. But if we're ever going to get to our out-of-control spending, this is how it's going to be done. Yeah, no question, Tony. And this is long overdue. Uh, and I think this conference is one that has really decided that we've got to either, uh, as the old saying goes, fish or cut bait. We've got, uh, we've got to move forward. And that's what the message is. But if we do mo move on these four preparation bills this week and the speaker uh, brings those to the floor, regardless of uh, what happens, and he makes a commitment to do that, then I think that that will go a long way in trying to at least get up like a five day CR just to allow us to pass a few more. I, I really am concerned about doing over a month CR because I think that will just you know, everybody will say we got plenty of time, right. and so we'll just kick the can down the road. So I would be in favor of doing a seven-day CR to let us just work for the next seven days and getting the get more bill individual bills passed. I think that would be a much better approach. So uh, the message is: get the coffee out. There's going to be some late nights there on Capitol Hill this week. Well, very could be, very well could be, and especially with 400 amendments on four bills, and not to speak of the remainder of the bills that hadn't even come up yet. All right. Uh, Congressman Robert Adderholt, always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tony, and thank you for all your work.